Hey everybody, welcome back to Devin the OG, the original Grognard, and we are here down at the table, and what is this? Shores of Triple E? What do you know? We're actually going to be playing a game that's not on the computer, and I haven't done that for a while, so this is going to be kind of a kind of a kind of a little shock to me. But anyway, Shores of Triple E, Fort Circle Games. Uh, I already went and did a, a uh, unboxing of this and gave my initial thoughts on that. So if you're interested in that, just go ahead and uh, find the link to where the video is on my channel somewhere. Anyways, so <laughs> what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing this today. We're going to be playing this solitaire. Uh, but before we jump into the solitaire of rules, there are some mechanics I need to go over uh, to let you understand how the basic game mechanics of, well, the gameplay runs. Um, first of all, you've got these big ships, these big three masters. These are American frigates. Uh, they throw two dice in combat and can take two hits. You've got these little Corsairs. That's a Tropolitan uh, Corsair. And there are a number of allied Corsairs to the Tri Tripolitan forces uh, right here. And since they're color-coded, it shouldn't take too much to figure out which nations they go to. Morocco, Algeria, Tun Tunisia. <laughs> there are also some of these, well, not some, two uh, of these yellow frigates. And they uh, are the Swedish frigates. They throw two dice. I should also mention that the Corsairs, whatever color they are, be they orange or red, throw one dice in combat and can take one hit. And you've also got a number of blocks representing infantry. Red for the Tripolitan forces, white for uh, mercenaries in U.S. service, and blue for Marine Corps units. Uh, they throw one dice in combat and can take one hit. And we've got a bunch of dice. The cool thing is the, the dice are pretty much all color coded. So, you know, if you want to, you can use blue for U.S., yellow for the Swedish forces, red for the Barbary Coast Pirates, uh, or you just throw all the dice together. I mean, however you want to play it. There's no, no nothing stopping you. I kind of like, I kind of like tossing them all together because I don't like trying to break up the different colors. Also got a bunch of gold coins which represent victory points. Uh, if the Tripolitan forces get 12 of these, they immediately win the game. There's another way for them to win the game. Uh, if they sink four frigates, U.S. frigates, but I will say after having played it a handful of times, yeah, that doesn't happen very often. Um, <laughs> the Tripolitan forces, the Barbary Coast Pirates, can't really initiate combat against the uh, American and Swedish forces. Uh, they can only try to run past the blockades and then go uh, go get some go get some pirate booty from ships floating around out in the out in the Mediterranean. Uh, there's a couple cards that they have that can that can sink U.S. frigates, but if for some reason uh, the U.S. loses four frigates. Uh, then they automatically lose as well. There's a couple victory conditions that the U.S. have, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and if neither victory condition is met by the winter of 1806, well, then the game is a draw. I think there might be some conditions. No, I think it's just a straight-up draw, so we'll go with that. Uh, so <laughs> different types of cards you have. Let's take a look at this one right here. Uh, you've got this, you'll notice this little insignia right here. This is a core card core game card uh each side have three of these and these are always out in front of the player these are not in your hand these are always out face up and once played they are removed from the game as you can see the three and you can kind of tell these are really really powerful pirate raid with the corsairs from the harbor of tripoli and the corsairs from the harbor of each active ally algiers tangier and tunis yeah, that's a pretty powerful card you'll you'll see why you usually don't get that much raiding out there um and of course the u.s have their versions over there Let's see if I can zoom in on them and if it shows up. Okay, yeah, right there. Thomas Jefferson, move up to eight frigates, resolve any battles that result. Again, when we start seeing the gameplay, you'll realize, wow, that's actually pretty powerful. Uh, Swedish frigates arrive, place the two Swedish frigates in the naval patrol zone of Tripoli, and Hemet's army created. Hemet was basically uh, 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 Yasmir or Yusuf's. Yasmir. This isn't pirate or this isn't uh, Arabian Nights. It's not Jasmine. Uh, it was... Uh, Yusuf's older brother who had been exiled to Egypt 
And the U.S. decided, well, you know, we should, one of the ways we can win this is by putting a pro-U.S. leader on the throne of Tripoli. And that was one of the plans that they had. So, yet not only are you, is the U.S. forces working on naval interdiction and blockading, they're also working on trying to raise an army at Alexandria and march them down the coast of Tripoli. So you got a couple different ways you can approach this game. Uh, okay, so those are the core cards. Another card that you're going to have is you see this little insignia with the with the cross sabers. These are battle cards, and if they're used in combat as a battle card, and it's removed from game. So here, and here's one for the Tripolitian uh, Tripoli, Barbary Coast Pirates. Playable when making a pirate raid with Tripolitian Corsairs. Roll three additional dice. Well, that's actually pretty powerful because you got to remember Tripolis Corvettes. Corsairs only roll one dice each. So you're getting a lot of extra dice when you're out raiding. Um, I'm not going to get into the setup yet. U.S. has those cards as well. And then for the uh, Barbary Coast player, you also have these two cards that have this insignia here. This card is used in solitaire play. Do not use in two-player game. Pretty self-explanatory. They are used only for the solitaire T-Bot. Uh, a quick overview of the map. We have several harbors. I think everybody can figure those out. We've got uh, nine harbors overall. We've got two blue. Well, technically there's a third blue, but I'll get to that in a little bit. There's two blue U.S. ports, Malta and Ange Alexandria. Three Tripolitan uh, harbors, uh, Tripoli, Benghazi, and Dern. Derne? I still have not figured out how to say that. And I even watched a video on it earlier. And then three of the uh, Barbary Coast allies, Tripoli's allies of Tunis and Tangier. And Lira. Tunis and... Algiers and Tangier. I'm getting my words mixed up. And then, of course, there is Gibraltar, but Gibraltar is kind of a neutral port, so I don't know why it's colored blue. Both U.S. and uh, Tripoli's and uh, Barbary Coast Pirates can exist simultaneously in there uh, under the watchful eyes of the British, who are basically saying, play nice or else. Um, so... Uh, yeah, it's more of an ally, U.S. allied port because that's where all the U.S. reinforcements come from, as you can see. In the following years, 1802, 1803, 1804, 1804 they do get reinforcements and they do show up at uh, Gibraltar. But it's also, you know, like I said, the 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 Tripoli, Triple T, Trip. Tripolis and uh, their allies can also operate out of Gibraltar. The slightly light, lighter shades outside of each port are the patrol zones, which basically is where most of the U.S. ships are going to be. Um, the, the whole goal is for the U.S. to try to blockade these ports and intercept the ships before the enemy Corsairs can get out and raid the Mediterranean for loot. Now, there is car... You can do actions to put allied sh U.S. ships into enemy ports and directly attack the ships that are in port. Uh, and... You may want to do that. That's a perfectly viable tactic, and we may see that in the playthrough that we're doing. Uh, so that's the basic mechanics of the game. Uh, oh, yeah, and the two two ways that the U.S. can win. Let's see if I can find the cards real quick. Uh, okay, right here. Treaty. This is kind of the historical. This is basically what happened historically. Playable if the fall of 1805 or later, the cities of El Algiers, Tangiers, and Tunis are at peace. In other words, there are no uh, of their Corsairs in port. The city of Durin has been captured. That's that city right there. Again, you're going to have to use Hamet's forces to do that from Alexandria. Uh, and there are no Tripolian frigates in the harbor of Tripoli. So, right there. So, and then you play the card, and if all those conditions are met, the game ends immediately in an American victory. Then, there is also the victory or death card, Assault on Tripoli. Playable in the fall of 185 or later, move all American frigates and gunboats to the harbor of Tripoli, move Hamet's army from Begezi to Tripoli, and or play send in the Marines, resolve the assault on Tripoli. Not a historical outcome. We never really did assault uh, Tripoli in the first uh, Barbary Coast Pirates War. Uh, but it is kind of nice to have an alternative uh, uh, victory condition in there regardless, especially if you don't think you can uh, fulfill the first victory, or the U.S. player can fulfill the first victory condition. All right, so, oh, there's one other card that I wanted to show you, another icon on the card. 
And you'll see it's got a lightning bolt there. If played in his event, the card is removed from the game. So normally you've got events. Oops, it's uh, <laughs> a whole bunch of them. Oh, oh come on, we've got to have a blank card. There we go, blank card. Uh, early deployment. Uh, take one American Frigate from the Fallen Year of the Turn Track and place it in the Naval Patrol Zone. You can play this at any time as an event. You don't discard it from the game. It goes into the discard pile. However, if it's got a lightning bolt on it and you play it as an event and not as a card to do an action, then the card is removed from the game and you won't see it again. Uh, there are six turns, and basically you draw six cards a turn, but there's only like 24 cards on each side. So when you're playing a two-player game, you are going to be cycling through the deck, and in 2005, you're going to be reshuffling, and then there's something special that happens in 2006, and I don't remember off the top of my head because I've never gotten the game that far. <laughs> so what I will say is having played it a handful of times and having to restart a couple times because I realized I messed up especially when it comes to how the bot works. Uh, I, I haven't been able to win as the Americans yet. So in the solo play, you're playing as the Americans. So that should tell you something about the bot that, well, all right, take take it for a grain of salt. I mean, this is me we're talking about. So. <laughs> Anyways, we'll go. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and step into setting up the, the board for solitaire play. And the board pretty much is similar to solitaire play as it is in head-to-head. Uh, uh, -head. Although, is it, I always keep forgetting. I think I might have an extra Corsair in there. I can't remember how many Corsairs start off in Tripoli. Yeah, okay, so it is five Corsairs. So it is five Corsairs in AAA. I think in the two-player game, they only start off with three Corsairs there. Uh, and then the only other real difference is that Benghazi and Dern have one less infantry when you're playing in a two-player game. In solo play, they get one extra each. Also, when you're setting up for solitaire play, you actually kind of have to set up the bot a little bit. And you do that by setting up... Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so people can see these cards. You set up those three core cards, and those will kind of be, be the, well, the core of what the Solitaire bot is going to do. Then you take the six battle cards, and you set them up, and they do say in order how you're supposed to set them up. Happy Hunting, Merchant Ship Converted, Uncharted Waters, Mercenaries, Dessert, U.S. Signal Books, Overboard, and the Guns of Tripoli. Those are set up in specific order by the bot, and then you take the two Solitaire-only cards, for solitaire play and set them off to the side. It's very important that you need to set these up because this is basically the engine that will run how the cards are played out. Also, as you go through the game, you may have to draw other cards. And here on the back is the solitaire card play requirements. You may have to draw other event cards and basically tells you exactly how these cards are played. So for example, Murad Rees breaks out. Play if there are no frigates in the Naval Patrol Zone of Gibraltar or if it is the winter of 1801. Well, if that condition, those conditions are met, then you will play this card. Move two Tripoli and Corsairs from the Harbor of Gibraltar to the Harbor of Tripoli. Any American frigates in the Naval Patrol Zone of Gibraltar may first make an intercept roll. And it does this for every card. And it's a good idea to really focus on what the conditions for the three core cards are, because those are the ones you're going to be checking the most until they until they activate. And then you're also going to really want to pay attention to the battle cards right here. So, for example, with this one, Happy Hunting, what's the conditions for playing this in solitaire? Happy Hunting, play on the first Tripolitan Pirate Raid. All right, well, that's simple enough to note. Merchant Ship Converter, play on the first successful Tripolitan Pirate Raid, Uncharted Waters, yada, yada, yada. Plus, it's got a listing of all the event cards that you could possibly draw from the deck and what the conditions for their activation and what their special rules are. Part of me kind of wishes... Oops, let's zoom back to normal. Part of me kind of wishes that this player aid... The, the solitaire card player solitaire card play requirements was its own separate player aid card. I mean, I understand putting it on the back, you're going to increase the price a little bit. It's something I find myself referring to a lot in the game, uh, just so I can remember what cards are played and what the requirements for those cards are being played. So I kind of wish it was its own separate card, but then again, eh, it's nothing stopping me from running up to Staples, copying it. Printing it out on cardstock, laminating it, whatever. It's a nitpick thing, but, you know, it's just something I would like to have seen. Nothing that's required. It works just functionally on the back of the rulebook. All right, so let's get into gameplay.
Gameplay starts 1801 in the spring of 1801 when the American forces uh, sent there from President Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson Johnson? Why am I thinking? Why, why did my brain all of a sudden? Jefferson. <laughs> Uh, reached uh, reached Gibraltar and found out that they were now that the U.S. was now at war with Tripoli, regardless of what the president had tried to do to make peace. But the Tripoli Tripolitian trip ah, tongue twister Tripoli forces Barbary Coast forces I should probably just keep trying to say that uh, <laughs> were demanding too high of uh, payments to leave the U.S ships alone in the Mediterranean. And this was this was this was prevalent and the Barbary Coast pirates have been doing this for hundreds of years, is that they will go out and raid or hey, you all the nations who are moving ships through there have to pay tribute to for your ships to be left alone or there it was it was it was an extortion scheme. Flat out straight up plain and simple. Um and for the most part US ships had mostly been left alone because they were under the protection of the British up until that little thing called the Revolutionary War was resolved and we were no longer under the protection of the British. And the Bashar of Tripoli was wanting way much more. They they wanted, I think, two million, the equivalent of two million dollars a year to not bother uh, U.S. forces in the Mediterranean. However, the budget for the U.S. government at the time was 10 million. Yeah, I think think of that ten million versus what we're spending today. But hey, inflation. Um, so basically, they, they were asking for one fifth of the budget that the uh, America had to not mess with American forces. And well, Jefferson wasn't really too keen on that idea. Sent the letter off and was trying to figure out a way to do it. When the Bashar of Tripoli decided, "No, nah, screw it. We're just going to go to war anyways." And this is what we're fighting out. So what do we do? How do we set it up? We've already got the game set up. We've got all the cards set up. We've got the core card set up. We've got the battle card set up. We got the and we got the solitaire card set up. And we got the draw pile for the Bashar's forces set up. Now what we need to do is set up the US again. The US core cards are set up. They're out there. And then we just shuffle the cards. So let's just shuffle the cards real so there's no chance of anybody saying that I set up the deck or loaded the deck beforehand or whatnot. And just like in a two-player game, I get six cards. Both sides get six cards when they play. However, since we're doing solitaire play, <coughs> so let's take a look at our six cards. And we start, and the U.S. forces start off, so I am going to do something first. I'm either going to play a card, well, I am going to play a card. It's not I might play a card. I will play a card. I will either play it for the event or I will discard it to do an action. So let's take a look at the cards we got. Uh, Bainbridge supplies intel. Take any card from the American discard pile and either place it in your hand or play it immediately. That's a good card. We'll hold on to that one. Uh, send in the Marines. Available if Assault and Trip on, on Tripoli is the active event card this turn. This card is really only used when you do the, the Victory or Death, the Assault on Tripoli card. And that's not even until 1805 or later. So we don't really need this card right now. Uh, Hamet recruits Bedouins, uh, playable if Hamet's army has been created, uh, and that I will go ahead. Hamet's army is only created as a core card, and it has to be played in the spring of 1804 or later, and at least one American frigate is in the harbor of Alexandria. Again, it's 1801. We're not going to be seeing this. This card practically played for a while. Early deployment, take one American frigate from the following year, the year turn track, and place it in the naval patrol zone. That might be something useful. Get the 1802 frigate and get it deployed early. What else do we have? Uh, Marine sharpshooters play at the start of a land battle. All Marine infantry units hit on a five or six for each round of combat. Again, we're not seeing, we're not going to see any ground combat until at least 1805. So not a card that we really need to worry about playing. Uh, and General Eaton attack. Again, another card. We, we <laughs> Hammett's army isn't going to even be out there until 1805. So I got a bunch of cards. Let's see. I've got one, two cards that are practical for playing for events. Um, so basically, I'm not going to play those cards for events. I'm going to play them for actions. Now, what can you do as an action instead of playing a card for an event? Take a quick look at the rules right here. The American player may want to do one of the following. Play a card as an event. Discard a card to move up to two frigates. Discard a card to build a gunboat in Malta. 
So there's not a lot you can do, but you need to be aware of what there is. And in a multi in the two-player game, uh, the Tripolitan player may do the following play as card as event. Discard a card to Pirate Raid with Corsairs from Tripoli. Discard the card to build a Tripolitan Cors Corsair in Tripoli. Okay, so not much that either side can do. But since I know how the bot works a little bit, what I'm going to do... Come on, focus, is we're going to go ahead and play Marine Sharpshooters. We're not going to play that as a event card. We're just going to discard it, and it goes into the discard pile, and we're going to play it to do an action. And the action I'm going to do is move to U.S. Frigates. So I'll just go ahead and toss that up there in the discard pile, like so. Uh, those are the draw cards. And then I'll put those there. Uh, so I'm going to take two American frigates, and I've only got three frigates out, and I'm going to be able, and I'm going to move them. And when you move, you can move anywhere you want. Uh, you can move to a patrol zone. You can move into an enemy port, and whatever you want to do. What I'm going to do now, as soon as you move into an enemy port, that'll that'll trigger a combat. I'm not going to get into that right now because that's not what we're going to do. But we are going to go ahead and put the two frigates, and they are going to uh, blockade the port of Tripoli to try to catch any Corsairs if the bot decides to send the Corsairs out a raiding. Now, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my turn. I'm done. Simple as that. Switch over to the Solitaire player, and basically you start off with... Uh, if we're playing a two-player game, then the Tripolitan player would play a card and do actions or whatever. However, we have got the Solitaire player. We're playing against the T-Bot. So now we need to see what cards are available in the queue for the T-Bot to play. And we see right away, you work left from right. First card is Mar uh, is the uh, Murad Reese Breaks Out. Okay, and the, and the conditions for that, play if there are no frigates in the naval patrol zone of Gibraltar or if it is winter of 1801. Well, there are no frigates in the naval patrol zone of Gibraltar. I'm in Gibraltar, but I am not in the patrol zone of Gibraltar. So, there are no frigates in the naval patrol zone, so we activate this card. And what are the events of this card? Move the, the two Tripolitan Corsairs from the harbor in Gibraltar to the harbor of Tripoli. Any American frigates in the naval patrol zone of Gibraltar may first make an intercept roll. Well... There's no frigates in the intercept zone or the patrol zone. And that's just going to go ahead and be a discard. And I'm just going to go ahead and discard that right over here. Let's probably move it out of the way because I'm probably going to be rolling the dice right here. It goes in the discard pile, period. Uh, if, I was, if it was a two-player game, it would be moved from the game. So, okay, so it doesn't go to the discard pile. It gets removed from the game. I'm just sitting over here now. The discard pile is going to be right there. All right, so what does that mean? These two frigates or these two Corsairs... Make the run for Tripoli. Now, normally, if any U.S. Uh, ships were in the patrol zone, I'd have to roll for an intercept. They're not. So even though, and so they move over to Tripoli. Now, even though there are frigates in the Tripoli intercept zone, ships going to the port make it in just fine. It's when they come out of the port when you have to roll an intercept roll. Um, and so that's actually kind of scary because now, now it puts, what, seven, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that puts seven Corsairs <laughs> In, uh, in the port of Tripoli, which is that's a lot of dice they're going to be throwing. Uh, and so that's basically, bam, that's, that's the that's the T-Bot player. We'll just go ahead and slide the cards down a little, the event cards down. There was no battle card, so we don't have to worry about taking a look at the conditions for the battle cards. And that's basically, bam, we're done with one turn. Just as simple as that. If you Once you've got the rules down, once you know what the cards are, game turns are going to go really, really quick in this game. Um, I mean, the, the, the back of the box, say 45 to 60 minutes. If, you're, if you know what you're doing, 15 minutes to an hour for, a person, for two people who know the, who know the rules to, to, to knock this out. All right, so now it flips back over to me. So now what I'm going to do is now I don't draw anymore. You only draw cards at the beginning of each year. Um, I'm actually not going to play any of these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play one of my core cards, which are always arrayed out in front of you. And we're going to play this one. We're going to play the Swedish Frigates Arrive. Place two Swedish Frigates in the Naval Patrol Zone of Tripoli. After playing his event, this card is removed from the game. So we'll just go ahead and push it off to the back and let's flip it over to indicate that i've already used it do the same with this card over here and i take the two swedish frigates all right now we got a little bit better coverage in 
around Tripoli. Now, the reason I wanted to do that and get those Swedish frigates out there quick enough is because there is a card that forces the, and it can only be played starting in 1803, that forces the Swedish frigates to leave. So you kind of want to get the Swedish frigates out as quick as possible because it, they're probably going to disappear by 1803. And as you can see, that's two years from now. So roughly, you know, you're going to get eight, maybe 10 turns out of them tops and you, you want the extra dice for the intercept actions. So that was my action. Bam, I'm done. Now we go over to the Triple T, Triple T, Barbary Coast player, and we take a look. The first, the first card, if we can focus, uh, Constantine's, Constantinople Sins Age. Again, playable if Hamet's army has captured Dern, or Dernay, whatever. Apologies for my mispronunciation of names. We all know it. I'm not really that good at it. Um, so yeah, this card isn't, you don't even have to worry about this card until Hamet's army arrives in Alexandria. So as long as you just remember, all right, we're not going to have to worry about this core card until later, um, then <laughs> you're fine. So then you move on to the next one and, uh, Yusuf, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Pirate Raid with Corsairs from the Harbor of Tripoli and the Corsairs from the Harbor of each active ally. It's a very powerful card, but let's go ahead and check the Solitaire card play requirements. In 1801 to 1804, play if two allies of Algiers, Morocco, or, Tun or Tunis are active. Have Corsairs in the Harbor. In 1805 and 1806, play if only one ally. Well, there's no allies active yet. None of the allies are active in Morocco, Algiers, or Tunisia. So again, this is another card that you kind of got to be aware of, but until there's multiple allies out there, it's not a card you have to worry about. Well, we're at the end of our list. We're at the end of our cards now. What happens then? Well, that's when you shift over to the solitaire only play cards. These two cards right here. And this is the card you're going to want to pay to pay, play, pay close attention to most of all. Because as a default, you operate under any event cards that may be stacked up here, and we'll be getting more to getting stacked up cards there. Or you're going to default to this card. Five Corsairs check. And since this is a solitaire card, you really don't have to look at the solitaire play requirements because this <laughs> explains the entire card right here. If there are five or more Corsairs in the harbor at Tripoli, Tripoli performs a pirate raid. Do not discard this card. So... Have I got five or more Corsairs in the harbor of Tripoli? I do. I have seven Corsairs in the harbor of Tripoli. So we're doing a raid action. What is a raid action? Well, it's the, like I said, it's the it's the Tripoli pirates going out trying to hit the various different shipping in the Mediterranean and to make money. And that's those gold coins right there, and that's part of their victory condition. So what happens when you do a raid? Um, first off, you, the, the player, or the bot in this case, nominates who's doing the raid, where they're going to. You don't really have to move the ships out into the open Mediterranean because the, the Corsairs always in their turn in a harbor. And they, they can't, they, they're not in patrol zones. They're not in the Mediterranean itself. So you don't have to move them out. You just say, all right, I'm doing this. So what happens is they first, they have to get, have to run the gauntlet through the patrol zone. If there's no allied American or Swedish frigates in the patrol zone, then they don't have to worry about getting intercepted. However, in this case, there's four frigates out there in the harbor waiting to intercept them. So you have to make an intercept roll. And that is a basic combat roll. And as I have mentioned before, each frigate throws two dice in combat. So we've got four frigates there. That's going to be eight dice. And no, I'm not going to break up the dice in the U.S. or American, uh, American or Swedish colors. I'm just going to going to going to roll them. Um, and so combat comes down to every six is a hit. All right, that was not good. That was not good at all. No sixes. So I inflicted no hits on the Corsairs as they tried to break for it. And so basically all the frigates broke for it. Um, now we're actually going to do the, the, the triple E's forces. Now we got to remember, we got all these battle cards here and you got to kind of, again, with the battle cards, you got to make sure you, you memorize them beforehand because happy hunting playable when making a pirate raid with Tripolitan Corsairs. Come on, focus. Roll three additional dice. Well, and we can see in our solitaire player, player aid requirements, Happy hunting, play on the first Tripolitan pirate raid. So this is our first pirate raid. We automatically play this card. And if played as a battle card, this card is removed from the game. So we're just going to put it over here, flip it upside down with the other card that we played earlier. 
How does a raid work? Well, you count up how many Corsairs you have because they have one dice each. And we've got seven Corsairs there. And the card gave us an additional three dice. So <laughs> we got ten dice. Take the ten dice. Roll them. Oh, that's not good. Basically, every six is a hit. And when you're raiding, a hit equates to... Getting a victory gold, getting one of the victory gold coins. So the Tropolitan forces had a huge turn that turn and was able to gather three loot of the 12 that they need to win the game. And then they sneak back into port, deliver the booty, and all is good. So yeah, the Tropolitan forces have actually started off with a really good turn. Also, again, merchant ship converted. Playable if a Tripolitan pirate raid has been successful. Well, we have had a successful raid, and let's look at the T-Bot battle cards. Merchant ship converted. Play on the first successful Tripolitan pirate raid. Well, <laughs> their first raid was a successful one, so they automatically play this card as well. Place one Tripolitan Corsair in the harbor of Tripoli. So they get another Corsair. They took some of that booty, and now they've got eight Corsairs there. That's... That's really not good. And that's it. Now we're into fall. Let me take a look at my cards. And now we're a little bit desperate. And unfortunately, yeah, all these cards. Now, you know what? We're gonna take we're gonna play early deployment. Uh, take one American frigate from the following year of the year turn track and place it in any Naval patrol zone. So this gets discarded because I used it as an event, but it but it remains in place. So we take the frigate from 1802 and put it in a patrol zone. Ah, there. All right. <laughs> Feeling a little bit, well, maybe not too much better. But now we've got more defense uh, uh, trying to maintain law and order outside of the, the waters of Tripoli. Flips back over to the, the T-Bot turn. Uh, Constantine, Constantinople sends aid. We know that card isn't applicable because it's not, uh, uh, Darren has not been captured. Uh, Yusuf, uh, cannot be played because we don't have any allies out there in, uh, Algier, Tangier, or Tunis. So then that means we go straight over to five Corsair check again. Well, I got more than five Corsairs there, so they're going to make a run for it again to try to break out. Well, it, the procedure is just the same as it was last time. Count up how many frigates I have. I've got five there, and I get two dice for every frigate. So I've got ten dice to try to intercept. And just as before, every six will inflict a hit. Uh, well, we got one hit that time. So basically, Corsairs can only take one hit. Boom. Boom. Oh, blah, 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 blah. It sunk to the bottom. So not as bad as good as it could have been, but hey, at least we got one of them. Um, now the Corsairs go ahead and do their. They've already made their their run, their intercept run. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So they've got seven, five, six, seven. Um, so we've got seven cards. So they've got seven dice again. They succeed on a six. On any six. And, oh, no sixes that time. Okay, good. That's good. No sixes. So there are no ships out there or they weren't able to get sure enough booty to bring back. So they've still got their three gold coins that they got from their very first raid. Bam. Turn is done. Now we move into winter. And again, switches back to my turn. Uh, let's see. Uh, again, all these cards are not... Well, I could take take any card from American Discard and play it in your hand or play immediately. Um, no, I don't want to do that. Let's take... Oh, you know what? Let's go uh, General Eaton attacks uh, Dern or Dernay or whatever. Uh, we're going to use this for an event or for an action. So we're going to discard it because we're not playing it as the card that, uh, for the event. And I am going to build a gunboat in Malta. That's one of the actions I can do when I discard a card. Uh, and we'll, they, this will help me when I actually attack the harbors. Um, the gunboats are only good for harbors. Otherwise, they stay in Malta all the time. So, okay, so that's it for me. So let's go uh, back to the uh, T-Bot player again. Again, Constantinople sends aid. 
uh, Yusuf. Both of these conditions are not in play. We don't have to worry about that. So we go straight to five Corsair check. We're going to be seeing this as long as I have at least five Corsairs in Tripoli. Once that falls below five, then we'll, what we'll do is we will end up drawing a card from the event deck and then playing those cards out and see what happens with that. But as long as Fortune remains on uh, Tripoli's side and I can't force them below five frigates or five Corsairs, they're just going to keep raiding. And guess what? They're going to raid again. So... Again, they have to make the intercept roll. I've got even more ships now. So we've got six ships. So that's going to be 12 dice. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Grab a couple more dice. And again, a six is going to inflict a hit, which is going to destroy a Corsair. And uh, much better that time. Much better. Well, we got two sixes that time. So we managed to eliminate two Corsairs before they were able to break out. Um, and so the Triple E, the T-Bot has five Corsairs left. So let's see what they get from their booty rolls. Um, what can be? Nothing. All right, so no sixes. So they so two turns in a row, they went out of raiding and didn't come back with much plunder. Although the first turn, I will say the three that they picked up definitely made up for that. All right, so that's the end of the turn. Whoops, bam. Go back to spring, move it to 1802. Now, normally, if the frigate was still here, I'd put it in Gibraltar, but since I played the card to, uh, to, to, to deploy it, I don't have to worry about deploying it because it's already been deployed. Also, at the beginning of each year, each player in a two-player game would go ahead and take six new cards, like so. However, we don't have to worry about the T-Bot because the T-Bot doesn't operate under normal circumstances. So we got six cards. I can only keep eight, though. And those do not include... I don't have to worry about adding in my core cards. Core cards are always out there. So you can always have your core cards plus two other cards. So let's take a look. Uh, burn the Philadelphia. Okay, play if there's at least one Tripolian frigate in the harbor of Tripoli. Well, there's none yet, so I'm probably going to get rid of that one. Uh, the Daring Steven Decatur... Uh, playable if either burn the Philadelphia or launch the Intrepid. Okay, we might hold on to that one. Uh, launch the Intrepid. Uh, roll one dice and apply the results. One to, th one to two, rate is a failure, no effect. Uh, or one Triple E in Corsair is sunk. Five, six, one Triple E in Frigate is sunk. If no, two Triple E in Corsair. So, yeah, okay. So we've got two cards that work together real real good. Launch the Intrepid and the Dar and Daring Stephen Decatur. So we're going to save those. Oh, I love the naval movement. Move up to four American Frigates. Resolve any battles that result. We're going to keep that one. Uh, Lieutenant Starrett in Pursuit. Uh, playable one making an interception roll. Each American Frigate may roll three dice instead of two. We're going to hold on to that one. And Preble's Boys take aim. Playable during a naval battle in a harbor. Each American frigate may roll three dice instead of two if played during the assault on Tripoli. Only roll the extra dice first round of naval combat. Okay, so I can only keep six cards. One, two, three, four. Five. We like those five. We're not, we don't want the Philadelphia. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and keep Bainbridge supplies in until two, Six. Okay, so those are the six cards. We're, or no, we can keep eight. Um, so we got three other. We got nine cards. Okay, let's go with Burn the Philadelphia and let's go with Hemet's uh, Recruits Bedouins. And we're going to go ahead. This the card that we don't keep. The cards that you don't keep go into the discard pile. <laughs> All right. So beginning of my turn, I need to decide what I want to do. I already know what I want to do. Oh no, let's go with. Yeah, let's go with uh, Launch the Intrepid. We're going to play Launch the Intrepid. So that's going to be a raid on the Corsairs in Tripoli. Uh, roll one dice and add the result. However, I do have a battle card. And you can tell it's a battle card because it's got the cross swords right there. Uh, the Daring Stephen Decatur. Playable if you either burn the Philadelphia or launch the Tripoli is the active event card this turn. Launch the Intrepid is the active event card this turn. Roll two dice instead of one and choose the preferred result. All right, so we get two dice. And we roll it. And, well, it's two fours. So I guess we're choosing four. Uh, one Triple E in Corsair is sunk. So the raid at least managed to sink one Triple E in Corsair. Now, we've fallen under the five limit for the, for the five Corsair check. So we're going to have to see what happens with that uh, when we get around to the T-Bot's turn. But you will also notice that if played in his event, this card is removed from the game. So this card 
is the the launch the intrepid is removed from the game we're just going to throw that right there this one however is also removed if played as a battle card this card is removed from the game as well so i just burned two of my cards never to see them again all right so that's my turn I did mine, and so now we go back to the T-Bot. Again, Constantinople stands aid, and Yusuf, cards that we know conditions are not met, so we don't have to worry about it. Now we got a little bit of a problem here. Five Corsair check. If there are five or more Corsairs in the harbor to Tripoli, perform a pirate raid. Do not discard that. Well, there's, 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 only, there's only four Corsairs left. What does that mean? What do we do in that case? Well, in that case, if you're unable to fulfill the conditions of a five Corsair check, then you draw a card from the, from, from the, well, the draw deck. And what have we got? Okay. Tripoli acquires Corsairs. Now, what we have to do is you have to go to the solitaire play requirements and look exactly to see what happens. And let's, what is this? Uh, Triple A acquires Corsairs. Right here. Here we go. If there are at least two Triple A and Corsairs available in supply, play immediately. Otherwise, add to the event of the event card line and draw another card. Well, there are multiple Triple A and Corsairs available in the supply. So we grab two of them and they get added to Triple A. And if you're playing two players, again, if played in his event, this card is removed from the game. However, when you're playing against the bot, all cards are basically removed from the game as the event because you don't ever reshuffle the uh, the the triple E the triple E deck, the triple E players deck. So now they're back up to one, two, three, four, five. Now they're, now they're back up to they got six corsairs there. That's not good. We don't we don't like having that many corsairs because we know as soon as it comes around, they're just going to raid anyways. So we need to try to do something to stop that. Now we're in the summer of 1802, and I know exactly what I want to do. Where is it? Where is it? Right there. There's my card. It's one of my favorite cards in the game. Naval, and I love the love the three master painting on it. Uh, move up to four American frigates. Resolve any battles that result. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the one American frigate that's still in Gibraltar. We're going to grab him, and we're going to grab the three frigates that are patrolling outside of Tripoli, and we are going to move into the port and assault the ships in the port. Now, gunboats. If you have any gunboats that are in sitting in Malta, you can pull them into any attack on a port. You can't use them for intercept, but if you're going into a port and attacking a port, you can pull the Corsair in with you, and that gives you an extra die, which is a good thing. Um, I think I might have a battle card that might help me... Okay, right here. Yep. Preble's boys take aim. Playable during a naval battle in a harbor. Each American figure, frigate may roll three dice instead of two. If played during the assault on Tripoli, only roll extra dice first round of combat. So we're going to play this card as a combat card, which will remove it from the game. So we're just going to go ahead and toss it in our, dis our, our removed from game pile way at the other side of the table. So now my frigates are rolling three dice. Well, I've got four frigates, so that's going to be 12 dice. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I've got one gunboat in there, so I get an extra dice. So grand total of thirteen dice, and again we just roll combat as normal. But since this is an attack in the harbor, combat is simultaneous, and I'll get to that as soon as I do the American roll. So let's do the American roll. Oh God, God, <laughs> that is nothing. I should have gotten at least two hits out of that. I got nothing. Okay, so now what normally would have happened had I had I inflicted any losses, and you just you know you, you tip a corsair over or something to mark that uh, it that you that it has has ta has taken casualties or has been sunk. Uh, but since combat is simultaneous, you count up however many corsairs are in the port. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and they roll six dice again, inflicting any hits on a six, and of course they do. So they inflict one hit now. I got two different options I can do. I can inflict the one hit on the gunboat and sink it. Or I can inflict one hit on a frigate and place it on the next turn of the turn track. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So he didn't get two hits, which probably I would have just assigned the hits differently then. I wouldn't have let him sink one of my frigates. As I said, it's very hard for the... Uh, uh, triple A player to to actually sink American frigates. I think in the in the four or five times that I played, 
they've managed to sink one, and that was because of an event card. So it doesn't happen very often. Um, so yeah, we're just going to play it since it was damaged. She's going to go in for repair. She's going to be available at 1803. Now, since I actually invaded the harbor and shot and tried to shoot up the harbor, all of my ships returned to Malta for their rebasing, rearming, repairs, supplies, all that other good stuff. And that's it. That's that turn. Now we go back over to the uh, Tripoli player. Again, these two cards have not met their conditions yet. We go to five Corsair check. We've got six Corsairs there, so they are going to make the raid. However, there's only two Swedish frigates patrolling the harbor now. Because of the combat, all my ships had to return to Malta, so they cannot patrol the harbor zone when they're rearming and resupplying. So the Swedish are going to go ahead and roll four dice, again, applying any sixes, and we don't get anything. Ah, very low dice rolling game this time. And one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six. Um, okay. Oh, actually, there was something that I have been missing, but we'll get we'll get into that this turn. Again, why I was saying it's a good idea to remember what the conditions for all your your core cards and battle cards are, because I've been I I, I skipped a battle card that I should have played a long time ago. It's this one right here. Playable after any interception roll that includes an American frigate. Randomly draw one card from the American player's hand and place it in the discard pile. Okay, so I forgot. There's been a couple intercept rolls. I forgot about that. That's fine. We'll worry about it the next time. But we still need to roll their uh, their attempted booty gathering. Um, oh, jeez. This is what's happened in my other games, too. Horribly, horribly, horribly bad dice rolls and it, until it comes to the Corsairs uh, doing their plunder check. Oh, no. So there's only one six. Uh, not two, two sixes. But... Um, so yeah, they get another coin. So they're up to four coins now. They're one third of the way there, and we haven't even hit the halfway point of the game. So this is not good. All right, so that's end of spring. We're now into the fall of 1802. So let's go ahead and take a look at my cards. Uh, take any card from the American discard pile and place it in hand or play it immediately. I think we're going to go ahead and play this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull the naval movement card from the discard pile and play it immediately. Move up to four American frigates. Resolve any battles that result. Um, any guess where I'm, where I'm going? Well, I don't have four frigates, but I have three frigates. So we're going to pull the three frigates from Malta. They're going to do a move, and they're going to go jump right into the Tripoli and Harbor again. They're going to pull the gunboat with them. Uh, and yeah, we're going to go ahead and roll dice. I've got three frigates there, so that's going to be six dice, and I've got a gunboat for a seventh dice, and dice gods, be good to me, and they're not good to me. <laughs> All right, uh, the, uh, Tripoli, uh, Corsairs fire back. They've got six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see if they can do any damage. And, of course, they do damage. They roll a six. You know what? It's close enough to the end of the turn. We'll just going to damage a frigate and put it in 1803. This is humiliating. Ugh, the U.S. are letting a bunch of Corsairs outshoot them. And since it was a harbor attack, all, ships, all U.S. ships returned to Malta. All right. Well, it goes right back over to the uh, Triple E player, the T-Bot, again. These two the conditions of these two cards are not met. And we go right to a five Corsair check. We've got six Corsairs there. So they're gonna make the run. Two Swedish frigates to intercept. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna intercept. Uh, oh, there we go. Finally, finally some decent dice rolls. Corsairs can only afford to take one hit, so three Corsairs are sunk. I guess you, something could be said about uh, uh, the Swedes operating. <laughs> better if the Americans weren't around. Now, unlike uh, naval battles, this is not simultaneous. Uh, this is an intercept roll, so only the survivors get to go ahead and try to do their plundering. There's three left, so they got three dice they're going to roll, and nothing. All right, so that may have been a very good turning point of the game with those uh, Swedish frigates uh, blowing three of those Corsairs out of the water. Uh, all right, so then it flips into winter. So my turn, what am I going to do? I've only got a few cards left. Uh, intercept roll, burn the Philadelphia. Okay, Hamet's army has not been created yet, so I'm going to go ahead and play that for an action. And uh, that's 
it goes into the discard because I'm just playing as an action. I get to move two American frigates and we're going to put them back into patrolling outside of Tripoli, much to the Swedes' chagrin, I'm sure. <laughs> Again, gunboats can't be moved. Gunboats always stay in Malta. They only get drug along when you're attacking a harbor. There is another action that you can do. If you take frigates, you can actually move them into a port that has no infantry or no naval capacity, and you can attempt to bombard and destroy enemy infantry units in these other two ports here as well. And it's basically you roll number of dice, which in this case would be four, and every six would eliminate an infantry. But we're not doing that. We're putting those guys back into... Actually, it may not be bad to maybe try to hit. No, 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 no. Let's go ahead and, and keep it like it is like that. Keep those... Well, no, because they're not going to be... You know what? Yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and hit Benghazi. Just so we can demonstrate how it works. So we're going to do a raid on Benghazi. There's no enemy ships there. But so we're just going to be doing naval bombardment against the infantry. Again, two dice for each frigate. We've got four dice total. And no sixes, so no infantry are killed. The infantry can't shoot back. And as it was an attack on a harbor, the U.S. forces return to... Oh, I could have brought the, uh, the uh, frigate along, or the gunboat. So we'll get one extra dice from the gunboat. And he didn't do anything anyways. But <laughs> okay. Um, again, flips back to the T-Bot player. These two cards are not, the conditions are not met yet. We go to the five Corsair check. There are not five Corsairs in Tripoli. So we draw an event card and what is it? Uh, Tripoli attacks. All right, well, let's take a look at the solitaire uh, play chart. And what does it say about Tripoli attacks? If there is exactly one American frigate in the Naval Patrol zone of Tripoli and there are at least five dice worth of Tripoli and ships, Corsairs count as one frigate to play immediately. Well, conditions are not met because I don't have at least one frigate in the in the harbor. Otherwise, discard to perform, perform a raid or build action. Well, it's a raid or build action. We haven't seen that. All right, so since it gets discarded, we're just going to put it over here. Raid or build is this other solitaire card. If a harbor, Algiers, Tangiers, Tunis, or Tripoli has at least three Corsairs or more Corsairs than American and Swedish frigates in the corresponding naval patrol zone, raid from that harbor. Otherwise, place a Tripolian Corsair in the harbor of Tripoli. Okay, so it has at least three Corsairs and more Corsairs than American or Swedish. Okay, so basically what that's saying, if I've got three or more in one of my ports and I have more Corsairs than there are frigates, then they're going to go ahead and, and do a raid. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to do a raid. The Swedes are going to intercept. Watch them finish off those last two Corsairs. Ah, close. Game close. Couple fives. Uh, so they pass the intercept roll. All three of them go out for a raid. And nothing. So there we go. That's it. All right. Now, new turn. Reinforcements placed in Gibraltar. And I draw six more cards. <clears throat> now let's see what we've got because I can only keep eight, and I've got two cards in my hand. Two cards in my hand already, so I, I will get to keep all of them. But let's take a look. Oh, there we go. Another naval movement. Move four American frigates. There's like three of these cards in this game. Uh, Congress authorizes action. Place two frigates on the following year of the turn track. That's always cool. Uh, tribute paid. Move one American frigate to a harbor of an active ally of Tripoli, Algiers, Tangier, Tunis. Remove, return all the Corsairs from the harbor. We don't have that, uh, but the Tripolian player receives two gold coins. So yeah, that that's not a condition. All right, I got one of the one of the one of the in the, the victory cards, which again I can't play until eighteen five or later. So that's probably going to get discarded for an action. Uh, Corsairs confiscated. Playable if there are any Tripolitan Corsairs in the har harbor of Gibraltar. Uh, return all the Corsairs from the harbor to the supply and remove the Mura. This is great if you can get it in like the first turn, <laughs> but that condition's not met, so I'll probably be using the... Oh, and then there's the other. Move up to four American frigates, resolve any battles that result. So I basically am going to be keeping all eight of my cards, because again, you can have uh, up to eight cards in your hand, not counting the two core cards that you have laid out in front of you. We've been going for about 50 minutes, and I think this is probably a good time to cut it here. Um, and we will return with the rest of the playthrough later. Yeah. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section. I'll talk to everybody later. See ya!